This morning has been calm until right now, and so Har has been spraying. He sprays whenever the wind is low and it's not about to pour rain because you know that you don't want to spray and then have everything wash off the trees. But I thought it would be interesting for uh, for Car to tell you at this time of year what does he spray and why. So here's Har. This time of year, the problem with mangoes that we most need to fight is powdery mildew, which occurs mostly in dryish, cool weather. If the weather's below 70 degrees, the powdery mildew loves it. And down in the 60s or upper 50s, it, it really grows fast. Uh, powdery mildew can make a mess of the leaves, but that's not what the big deal is. The big deal is that the powdery mildew messes with the flowers. It can prevent you from having any mango crop at all if the powdery mildew takes over the flower panicles, especially of some varieties. Some varieties such as Nam Doc Mai can get the flower panicles covered with powdery mildew and still uh, produce fruit. But most other varieties uh, will not set fruit at all if they get covered with powdery mildew on the flowers. So about a week ago, I sprayed with copper uh, two copper products and several nutritional products that uh, fights anthracnose and it does help to suppress powdery mildew. But most effective against powdery mildew is sulfur if you get it sprayed on the leaves and flower panicles before the powdery mildew starts. Once the powdery mildew has started, the sulfur does nothing uh, to cure that spot. Sulfur only works on uninfected tissue to prevent the spores of powdery mildew from germinating and starting to infect the plant. This, this is sulfur. This is Cosafet. Cosavet DF. DF means dry flowable. Uh, this is 80% elemental sulfur and 20% other products. The other products in there help uh, with the mixing and also helps make it a safer product to storage. I mean to store. If you were to use a pure uh, 98 or 100 percent sulfur product, uh, that is dangerous in storage because any cloud of dust can ignite and explode. Uh, this you have to be careful with too, but it's way less explosive and it's useless to make gunpowder. The pure stuff was used in old style black gunpowder along with bat uh, waste and uh, ground up charcoal. <laughs> anyway, the 80% stuff works better. Uh, Kosovet DF is just one of the many brands. Uh, any one of them is just about as good as the other. Some are labeled for organic production because they paid to be registered and others aren't. This one does have the Omni seal of approval and several of the others do as well. Now the amount that I'm using per gallon is one and a half tablespoons. Don't get your teaspoons and tablespoons mixed up. So this is one and a half tablespoons per gallon of the 80% dry flowable sulfur, whichever product you find to use. Before we mention the other products, 
Do not bother to use this if your sprayer does not have a good agitator. Sulfur does not dissolve in water. It only stays suspended in water if the water is in vigorous motion. Some things, if you put in a backpack sprayer with no agitator, you can do the little jig every few seconds and that'll work. That really is not practical with sulfur. It goes to the bottom very fast. You, you need a, a mechanized, vigorous agitator going. If you don't have that, don't even bother spraying with sulfur. You'll just end up with a a uh, clay gooey mess in the bottom of your tank. Uh, you may spend hours cleaning it out. With the sulfur, I just opened this bag so it's not too bad but uh, you can see clumps in here. So uh, I have to break those up. I don't want those clumps to go straight to the bottom of the tank. And normally, when I'm not talking to the camera, I do have my dust mask on. And safety glasses. None of these three ingredients are all that hazardous, but still one doesn't want any of them in one's eyes. Uh, you can buy liquid preparations of sulfur, but just because they're already in a liquid preparation doesn't mean they'll stay suspended in, in the tank. Uh, it's, it's still sulfur, it still goes to the bottom. Uh, I actually uh, got so I despised the, the liquid sulfurs because uh, sitting in storage the sulfur went to the bottom of the jug and I got really tired and sore uh, shaking those jugs. Uh, I prefer to start with powder. And one has to put the powder in slowly uh, with the agitator going and just, uh, just gradually pouring the powder in back and forth across the moving water. Uh, the other th way to mix sulfur is to put a little bit of water in a small container and, and stir it and, and uh, rub it against the wall of the container until you have a paste and add a little more water till you make a slurry and then pour it in the tank. If you're careless and pour your sulfur in fast without making a slurry first, uh, just pour in a bunch of sulfur powder. It will all go straight to the bottom of the tank and, and plug whatever outlet you have. Cueva is copper soap, also called copper octanoate. This is also Omri listed. It's one of the safer uh, copper products for uh, humans to use and it puts out way less copper per acre uh, than most of the other products. So some copper is good but accumulation of a lot of copper can be problematic especially after several years of heavy use. Uh, this copper soap not only provides some copper against fungus, uh, the soap aspect of it is also useful against some pests and mixed with sulfur it makes a nice spreader, uh, wetter spreader effect so that you get less distinct drops of sulfur on the foliage you get a, a better spread uh, of the spray. Uh, with this it's two and a half teaspoons per gallon. Remember a teaspoon is one-third of a tablespoon. Don't get your measurements mixed up. Obviously you have to multiply this amount per gallon 
uh, for the size of your tank or how many gallons you plan to use. And then uh, with larger tanks, of course, one, one uses a more convenient measurement. One doesn't stand there, you know, uh, using little spoons uh, 20 times or whatever. Yeah, this copper soap is very messy, very goopy, and it does settle parts of its ingredients to the bottom. Every time I come back, like 15 or 20 mi minutes later, to fill this small tank, I do vigorous shaking. This is real easy because this jug is almost empty. That's so easy to shake then. When it's full, it's a pain. And it's so well shaken up, I haven't seen any globs coming out this time. But often, even after I shake, globs come out. I'll put this back in because I'm not mixing any more today. And always after I pour it in, then I have to run water several times into this to get the rest of it out of the container and into the tank before it dries in the container. Seaweed is not an essential part of the spray mix, but it does provide nutritional benefits and some claim that it can suppress some pests uh, as well when the plant is well nourished with uh, micronutrients and trace nutrients and amino acids and so on that are present in kelp, seaweed extract. Uh, and this one I'm using at two teaspoons per gallon in this mix. As with most sprays, one wants to keep it out of one's eyes and off one's skin uh, so that one's showering goes faster later on and one doesn't get chapped or irritated skin or allergic rashes. With uh, kelp, some of it also settles to the bottom, so I shake that every time before I mix it. If I were using a, a liquid sulfur mix, I would have to shake that even more than, than these others. That's why I really get tired of the jugs of liquid sulfur. This kelp is right at the bottom of the jug. And even though I've shaken it every time, this is coming out thicker than was before. And you can see a bunch of hunks down in there. I do use a mask. This is just a heavy duty dust mask. And I reuse it many times. After use, I stick it out in the sun and rain till the next time I use it. Freshens it out. And this is my old face shield. I need to get a new one, but because of COVID, they've been out of stock for a while. Yeah, this spray can be used every week or two or three if there's no rain. You know, every two weeks is often enough. A three weeks probably still good enough if there's no rain. And one can alternate with another spray with more copper and other ingredients in there. It's not everything that you can mix with sulfur. You can end up with a sticky mess if you uh, mix some other types of ingredients. Whenever you try something new that's not following a good formula already provided, you should do a jar test and see what happens in the jar. 
if stuff floats or if it settles or if it turns into flakes or if the jar heats up. You know, there are a lot of strange things that can happen. Or if it makes a lot of foam. All those things you want to avoid except the floating and the, the sinking uh, you can deal with if you have a vigorous agitator. Uh, and then when you try a new formula that hasn't already been provided, tested elsewhere, uh, you need to spray just a branch here or there, mark it somehow, and watch it for several days to see if you've harmed the leaves or the growing tips or the flowers, whatever you sprayed, before you go and spray everything. And don't think that more is better of these ingredients. I've worked a, a, a well uh, on this formula. Uh, I read various places first and I tested it various ways. And you can hurt your plants if you go with heavier concentrations. You can also plug up your equipment if you go with heavier concentrations. One does not spray with sulfur in hot weather. If the weather forecast has a high of 85 degrees in the next three days, do not spray sulfur. <laughs>